Ah, you know what they say. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Ninja time! Hello and welcome back to Ninja Lab. My name is William and I will be your guide once again as we go over more qualifiers from the Elite Division of the National Ninja League Season 6 Qualifiers. Today we're going to start things off with the second qualifier to take place at Dexterity Depot. For the Elite Female Division, in second place was Ava Colasanti. Now, Ava has built up a good reputation on the National Ninja League so far this season, racking up wins in second places, but surprisingly, she, even though she got second place, she had just a major roadblock at the Warped Wall obstacle. She unfortunately took over three minutes attempting Dexterity's hardest Warped Wall, and it was just a real struggle for her to get up to that top. I, I couldn't believe how long it took her. But the good news, and this is key, is that she did in fact reach the top, which secured her second place. But unfortunately, in a race to try to clear some more obstacles within the remaining about 30 second time limit that was left, she failed the very next obstacle and her run ended right there. And in first place was Rachel de Guts. Similar to Ava, Rachel has been impressing so far this season, and in this case, she was able to get another win under her belt. Now, she did get a little bit hung up on the warped wall like Ava did, but only took her two tries to complete the obstacle. And even though she failed the exact same obstacle Ava did, the rules for the National Digital League is the furthest and fastest. So even though they went the same distance, Rachel cleared the warped wall much faster than Ava did, approximately 2 minutes and 15 seconds faster. So that earns Rachel first place victory. For the Elite Nail Division, in second place was Paul Fisher. Paul had a really long challenging course to get through and he got through approximately three quarters of it. Now, this course had a real ninja killer in the downhill jump, where you have to balance on a skateboard and slide down a ramp to a rope. And he was one of only three men to do it. And after that, it was relatively smooth sailing, that is, until he got to the dreaded floating boards. And that obstacle requires so much grip in your hands, so much pinch strength in order to keep yourself up, and he just wasn't able to do it. Now, the good news is that he made it to that obstacle about 30 seconds faster than the person in third place, so that allows him to qualify for the Northeast Regional Final. And in first place was Matthew Bradley. After watching this performance, I'm convinced that Matthew is one of the favorites heading into the Northeast Regional Final because this was a massive 20 obstacle course featuring some very tricky ninja killers throughout the entire thing and Matthew was able to clear all of them. Every single one. He was the only person, the floating boards, and he was able to complete the four obstacles that followed it. The cliffhanger, the jumping bars, the pipe slider, and a demanding rope climb at the very end. And he was able to complete the entire course with about 15 seconds left on the clock. Everyone else who qualifies for the Northeast Regional, you better watch out for Matthew, because he's coming for that title. However, because Matthew had already qualified for the Northeast Regional, Judas Licardelio earns himself in the spot as well. If you are interested in competing in the National Ninja League, go to NationalNinja.com to look at the full schedule of upcoming qualifying events. 
There may be one near you happening soon. But now let's take a look at the results for Hamden Ninja Academy. For the elite male division, in second place was Derek Matthews. Now, Hamden had a very good course with a trapeze, a flying pillar, a balance tank, and a monkey bar set with spinning holes. But unfortunately, this turned into a five ray race for the ninth obstacle. And Derek was able to get to the key lock hang, the ninth obstacle, in the second fastest time overall, 1 minute 17.3 seconds. However, when trying to get to the middle point of the obstacle, his grip gave out, and that is where he fell on the course. But the good news for Derek is that he qualifies for the New England Regional Final. And in first place was True Becker. True showed why he is impressive this season by reaching the key lock hang faster than any other competitor, doing it under a minute, a total of 54.52 seconds. And he was able to do so by reaching maximum efficiency throughout the first eight obstacles. And so he earns himself 10 more points on his total, but he was unable to hold on after reaching the second half of the obstacle. But as a result of True already qualifying for the New England Regional Final, Xavier Dantzler qualifies as well. It's time for the comment question of the week. The comment question is, what ninja related gift are you hoping Santa brings for you and places underneath your tree this Christmas? Or if you're someone who celebrates Hanukkah, what ninja related Hanukkah present would you like to receive? Leave your answers in the comments down below. Now, let's take a look at the results for the qualifier held at Ninja City. For the elite female division, in second place was Addie Herman. Addie had been dominating the other regionals in that she's taken on, but now she gets to dominate the Midwest as well. Ninja City actually had a really good course, and the women showed up, as this was a very hotly contested match for second place. But Addy was able to navigate some of Ninja City's more treacherous obstacles, and was able to reach the yellow spinners in the fastest time. Unfortunately, that is where she fell on the course as she slipped in between two of the pillars and was eliminated at that point of the course. But this allows her to qualify for the Midwest Regional Finals. And in first place was Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer took on this course at a steady and strong pace as she was able to take on Ninja City's many difficult balance and upper body obstacles. She was the only woman to get past the yellow spinners which guaranteed her a first place victory and she was able to make it a handful of obstacles further into the course. Unfortunately, when taking on the block pillars, she was unable to make the lache from one pillar to the other, and that is where her run ended. But she earns herself 10 more points for her first place victory, and because Jennifer had already qualified for the Midwest Regional Final, Faith Foster qualifies as well.
You know, it's not every day you get to talk about how a 19 obstacle course had five finishers complete it, but that's exactly what happened for the Elite Male Division. And of those five finishers, the second fastest one was Vance Walker. So Vance allowed himself to qualify for the Midwest Regional Final as well by putting on a performance that was very impressive overall. He powered through many of the obstacles, got through the balance tank section with grace and ease, and was able to just simply get through the entire course with a pretty fast pace. And this goes to show why Vance is definitely someone to look forward to in the various regional finals that he is qualified in. (laughs) But that was only good enough for second place, believe it or not. There was someone even faster. And that person was Elijah Browning. I actually, after watching this run, I actually thought Elijah ended up using a lot of time early on on the super low ring climb, but after that obstacle, he was able to take the rest of the course into overdrive and just speed through the rest of the course. Having watched Vance run right beforehand, I think the biggest time saver was Elijah on the spin cycle, as he was able to get through that obstacle much faster than Vance did. And all together, Elijah was able to complete the course about 13 seconds faster than Vance did, which is incredible, because Vance made it through the course pretty fast himself. But Elijah, just like Vance, is someone to look forward to when it comes to the finals. However, because Elijah had already qualified, Eric Shepard benefits and qualifies for the Midwest Regional Final, which means, thankfully, all five people who finish this course will be competing in the Midwest Regional Final. The full runs from our qualifying events featured on Ninja Lab are uploaded to the YouTube channel every single week. In fact, we have a mega playlist that you can go and watch all the runs for yourself as well as bonus runs featuring other people who completed a qualifying course and some noticeable names of your favorite ninja competitors. So now let's take a look at the results for Warrior Factory Buffalo. For the elite female division, in second place was Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer was able to navigate quite a bit of the course and looked very impressive early on. Able to get through the circuit board with relative ease and the course actually had a bit of a cool transition from the circuit board to having to do a key lock hang. And she was able to make a impressive transfer on the cliffhanger jump and get through the parallel bar section with no problem. She was even able to navigate through the buoy boulevard and was completely unfazed by the other buoys that got in her way. However, when she tried making the transfer on the giant jump hang, she was unable to bridge the gap and completely whiffed and fell into the foam pit of death. But the good news is that run qualified her for the New England Regional Final. And in first place was Rachel Goldstein. Rachel continues to show why she is fantastic by finishing third place overall in the elite division for this qualifier. Overall, Rachel's performance was simply outstanding, uh, showcasing immense strength and body awareness throughout the entirety of the course. And most importantly, she was able to defeat the giant jump hang, which was a real ninja killer for the entire field of that qualifier. Unfortunately for Rachel, just a couple of obstacles later, she just ran out of time on the course, and so we'll never truly know how far she could have gone. But the good news is that that earned her 10 points, first place, and a qualification in the New England Regional Final. (laughs) 
For the elite male division, in second place was Julian McConnell. Julian took on this course like a man on a mission. He was cruising through the early obstacles with speed and efficiency. And when he had to take on the giant jump hang, an obstacle that took out so many people before him, he made that obstacle look easy by just cruising through it as if it was just child's play. And it probably could have gone further, but unfortunately when trying to dismount the floating monkey bars, he missed chi by just a hair. He was on the platform, but lost his balance, fell backwards into the pit, and that is a failure on the course. But the good news is that he finishes in second place and qualifies for the New England Regional Final. And in first place was Ryan Sanders. Ryan looked incredibly talented on the course early on with a impressive skip transferring from the circuit board and not having to use the key lock hang portion and he was able to just cruise through many of the early obstacles and used his arm to make sure that he hung on to that giant jump hang but unfortunately he got really hung up on the floating monkey bar birdhouse combination obstacle but the good news is that he was patient enough to eventually find his peg into the hole of the birdhouse and complete the obstacle allowing him to automatically get first place unfortunately for ryan he spent so much time on the birdhouse that by the time he got to the final rope climb he had only about three seconds left on the clock and he was unable to reach the buzzer in time to finish the entire course. But the good news is they let him finish anyway so he was able to complete all the obstacles just not within the 3 minute and 30 second time limit. And in addition Ryan qualifies for the New England Regional Final. What a run. And don't forget to follow the National Ninja League on Instagram, where you can find posts giving updates to the schedule, as well as some features of the results and possible upcoming events. So let's wrap up this episode with the results of the second qualifying event from the original Movement Laboratory. For the elite female division, in second place was Ava Colasanti. Hey, I recognize that name. Ava continued her run of good performances by putting on another good performance. She was able to take on a majority of the course and showcased her great strength overall. But unfortunately, when transferring to a reverse grab on a cliffhanger, it just didn't work out for her. And unfortunately, she fell on that portion of the course. And in first place was Abby Clark. The always impressive Abby was able to muscle her way through the first 60% of this course. And unfortunately, she fell in the exact same part that Ava did, that dreaded reverse catch cliffhanger. And it just didn't work out. She was unable to maintain her grip. But that was good enough for her first place because she got there faster. Now, because both Abby and Ava already qualified, Taylor Johnson and Elena Borges both qualify for the Northeast Regional Final. Watch out. 
Watch your head and face. Watch your head and face. For the elite male division, in second place was Max Feinberg. Now this course turned into a three right race because three men finished this course and Max was able to get through these obstacles in a calm, collected, but slightly faster than the person in third place. So. Overall, he was able to complete that transfer to the cliffhanger and was able to get through the small handful of obstacles afterwards and hit the buzzer with a time of 1 minute and 48.67 seconds. And in first place was Matthew Bradley. Simply put, Matthew was perfect on this course. He finished in a time of 1 minute and 10.98 seconds, which is about 38 seconds faster than Max finished. Holy cow, I cannot believe how fast Matt was just cruising through this course. He looked like he didn't miss a beat throughout the entire thing. Simply perfect. Absolutely perfect. Perfect. Matthew just may be an early favorite to potentially win the whole thing. But because both Matthew and Max already qualified for the Northeast Regional Final, Luke Dillon and Ivan King both qualify as well. Hey, thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of our other videos. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you later.